In this presentation, what we're going to do is look at writing some functions with Julia. So I'm just picking out some examples and coming up with a way to implement them. Now, the first thing, well, what we're going to do in generally in this uh, presentation is generate random sequences. So if you're familiar with things like Drunkard's uh, Walk or Gambler's Ruin or Stochastic Process or Random Process or anything like that, you know, you should be reasonably familiar with, uh, with uh, how these uh, sequences will be used. So the exercises to generate a random sequence comprise of either minus ones or ones, where both are equally likely. So let's do that one first. So let's go to Julia here, Julia Studio. So first off, let's generate a random sequence uh, uh, just to start off with. So random sequence of uh, 10 values, let's say. And we're going to call it X. So there we have X there. So what we have to do is transform this in such a way that we get uh, two integer values, minus one and one. So what we have to do is sort of partition what we have there into two equal groups. And one way of doing that is, first off, to multiply by two. So two star X. So here we have uh, uh, numbers that are less than one and numbers that are greater than one, zeros and ones. So what we could do next is put the apply the floor function of that. So floor of two star x. So we have zeros and ones. That that's making progress. But what we have to do is turn that uh, get uh, get answers that come out as minus one and one, not zero and one. So a simple bit of mathematics will uh, come into play here again. And essentially, first thing we're going to do is. Um, Multiply the the previous value by two again. There we go. So two times the floor. Oops, that's a bit more than I intended to show you. Is. So uh, two times the floor of two times x, and now we have values of zeros and twos. So all we have to do now is go minus one. There we go. So that gives us minus one and one. So uh, that is how we would implement this uh, command here. Now there's other ways of doing it, and I got the next, the, the second exercise is probably a bit. We can use this, the second uh, exercise uh, to do this as well. So what I'm going to do is just put in rand n back where x was, such that we have uh, that many values. Okay, so let's run that now. Uh, there we go, random walk, disk DW is recognized. So, uh, let's do this now. So, disk DW, uh, let's do it for 200 values, and we're gonna say that as Y, okay. There we have there, minus one and one. But, okay, how do we know uh, what is in our like let's say this is 10,000 values and you can't check each one rather than 200. What could you do there? So uh, what you could, there's some ways of checking the output and something that we can use right now is the histogram command uh, Y and get the histogram of Y. And there we see um, that there are two possible outputs there, and we know that we know that's going to be minus one and one, and the there's two possible outcomes there, and of one outcome there's 106 occurrences, and the other out uh, the uh, second outcome is 94 occurrences. Okay, so and there's no other there's no other uh, occurrences of any other outcome. So that's something we intend. So there's no zeros or plus one uh, uh, zeros or 0.5s hiding in there. Okay, uh, something that is also useful is to check the the sum of the signs. That's it. if you're sort of the sum of sine of y. Now, essentially, that should turn out to be um, twice the uh, essentially the difference between those two numbers there. Okay, so 106 minus 94 is 12 okay now it doesn't really matter about the sign so okay that is also another way of checking it now that's grand so what i'm going to do now is go on to the second exercise and generate a random sequence of minus ones or ones 
uh, where the probability of 1 is p and the probability of minus 1 is 1 minus p. So essentially that's the second, the last part there is just to sort of clarify that there's only two possible outcomes and no other outcome is possible. So if you're familiar with something like the binomial distribution, um, that is, uh, that might be reasonably familiar. So let's go back to Julia here for a second and we'll clear that now. So first off, let's start off start P as 0 0.475, just for something like that. Now, what we're going to do here is how this is the sort of trick. Now, there's quite quite a few ways of implementing this, but I'm going to come up with a little trick here to uh, show you the quickest way of doing this. So I'm going to set up x as a random value of ten, uh, uh, random array of ten values between zero and one. Okay. Now, what we're going to do there is p minus x. Okay, so if the value of x is less than p, we get a positive number there. And if the value of x is greater than p, we get a negative number there. And that's how we could sort of uh, transform it into uh, the right proportion of positive and negative values. Okay, so that's the sort of useful trick there. Now, how do we turn that into uh, minus ones and plus ones? Well, all we have to do there is use the sine command. So, sine of p minus x. There we have it there. And in this particular instance, we actually got quite a few plus ones, but that's just a sort of fluke. So, that is how we're going to implement this, p, uh, sine of p minus x. Uh, let's, let's go back up here write our function so p minus x and just remember to change x into rand n and we also specify a default value for p also 0 0.50 let's just say so the uh, exercise one uh, can equally be implemented using what I have there and in fact now you're able to change the uh, the probability of a success the probability of a plus one now let's just double check that that works. So far so good. All four or F four. So uh disk DW uh DW oops of let's say five hundred values with a probability of success of not point four zero. And we're gonna save that as Y. Okay, looks good so far. And let's just use the histogram command just to double check that we got the types of the, the relative uh, type of output we should be looking at. So, uh 500. So, there's about 60% which is close enough to 300 are minus ones and 215 plus ones. And again, those are the only two uh values there. So, there's only two outputs there which is a encouraging result. So let's just do it one more time for 5,000. There we go. And just double check that gives us the right type of output there. Yeah. So again, only two possible outputs. And there's 2969 of minus ones. And there's 2,031 of plus ones. Okay, that ends our presentation. That's quite a lot of work done. So anyway, the a really useful approach for implementing random walks or gambler's rune or something like that is disk DW. Discrete drunkard's walk is what I'm calling it. Okay, that ends our presentation.